Halloween has pagan roots. Samhain was an annual harvest festival celebrated by the Celts in a region including modern-day Ireland, Scotland, Wales, England and Northern France. It means summer's end in Gaelic and it was held from sundown on October 31st through November the 1st. The Celts harvested their crops and probably slaughtered livestock for food. They celebrated their abundance with the sporting games and a giant feast. On a spiritual level, Samhain marked the time of the year in which the barrier between the earthly world and the spirit world dissolved, allowing spirits and fairies to walk among and perhaps torment mortals. The Celts painted scary faces on turnips and on their own faces to scare away the returning spirits. It is also believed that fairies dressed as beggars and went door to door asking for charity. Samhain is also described in countless myths and folk tales as a period of mystical intensity. Celtic priests, the Druids, built huge bonfires, practiced divination rituals and conducted rites to keep ghosts at bay. The Romans used to celebrate Lemuria on May the 13th, a festival of the dead, during which Romans performed rites to exorcise the malevolent and fearful ghosts of the dead from their homes. By the 7th century, many Western European nations had converted to Christianity. In the Middle Ages, the period of feudalism, Lemuria, became a feast dedicated to Catholic saints. During the 8th century, Pope Gregory III moved the annual festival of All Saints Day, celebrated on May the 13th, to November the 1st, right around the time Samhain took place. To this day, historians don't quite know whether or not the switch was made to transform Samhain into a Christian holiday, or whether it was simply more practical for the feast to be held during autumn, when harvest crops could be used to feed hungry pilgrims traveling to Rome. Later, November the 2nd was designated as All Souls Day and the eve before All Saints Day, once known as All Hallows Day, was stopped All Hallows Eve. Over the centuries, this holiday evolved into modern day Halloween. A soul cake is a small round cake which is traditionally made for All Hallows Eve all Saints Day and All Souls Day to commemorate the dead in the Christian tradition. The cakes, often simply referred to as souls, are given out to the children and the poor called solas who go from door to door during the days of All Hallowtide, singing and saying prayers for the souls of the givers and their friends. Souling in England continued until the 1930s by both Protestant and Catholic Christians. Souling became popular and is even referenced by William Shakespeare in 1993. In Britain and Ireland, there were also many accounts of people going house to house in costume reciting verses in exchange for food and sometimes warning of misfortune if they were not welcome. The Scottish Halloween custom of guising was celebrated with children in disguise playing pranks to imitate evil spirits and using carved turnips as lanterns. Activities such as bobbing for apples, which was a Scottish occurrence known as duking, were also recorded.
There are actually few accounts of Halloween in colonial American history, due in part to the large Protestant presences in the northern colonies and their strict religious beliefs. However, down in the southern colonies, where larger, more mixed European communities had settled, there are more accounts of Halloween celebrations mixing with Native American harvest celebrations. In the mid-1800s, nearly two million Irish immigrants fleeing potato famine helped shape Halloween into an even more widely celebrated event. I gave my mommy a cake, she turned into a big bear, my Odin tried to dare in. If that's not a pure mess, I don't know what is. Uh, we can't understand her. She's from the other studio. Ah. The Scottish immigrants celebrated with fireworks, telling ghost stories, playing games and making mischief. Young women were frequently told if they sat in dark rooms and gazed into a mirror, the face of their future husbands would appear. However, if a skull appeared, the poor girl would be destined to die before marriage. Borrowing from the English and Irish traditions, children adopted the practice of guising and would dress up in costumes, but there are only isolated references to children actually going door to door, asking for food or money during Halloween. However, Halloween pranks and mischief had become a huge problem in the 1920s and the 1930s, mostly because the pranks often turned into vandalism, property damage, and even physical assaults. Bad kids and even organizations such as the Ku Klux Klan used Halloween as an excuse to engage in criminal activity. Schools and communities did the best they could to curb vandalism by encouraging the uh, trick-or-treat concept. The Boy Scouts got into the act by organizing safe events like school carnivals and local neighborhood trick-or-treat outings for children, hoping this would stir troublemakers away. By the late 30s, vandalism was decreasing as more and more children enjoyed to participate in trick-or-treat. But the practice we see today, children dressed in costume, going house to house saying trick-or-treat, did not really come about until the mid-1940s. Television, movies and other media outlets have helped Halloween grow into America's second largest commercial holiday, which brings in an estimated $6.9 billion annually. Watching horror movies and visiting haunted theme parks are popular modern ways to celebrate the evening. Some have argued that Halloween has lost its meaning due to all the corporate and media influences. But what is certain is that, in this technology-driven world, it is important to remember that along with society, even holidays are subject to evolution. No matter what people choose to do, no matter what cultural, spiritual or material way, the essence of Halloween in America will endure for ages.